Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and toss a coin to your spoiler man as we're breaking down The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf. The brand new anime is now out on Netflix, and it's got a lot to unpack from it about the lore of The Witcher, and also where things could be going in the future. Throughout this video, we're going to be going over it from top to bottom and talking about all the things you need to know about its story and ending. Smash the thumbs up button if you enjoy the video, and don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this each and every day. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf. Ok so similar to its live action counterpart, Nightmare of the Wolf plays somewhat with time and we follow a character named Vesemir who pulled himself up out of poverty in order to become a Witcher. Long term fans of the series will know Vesemir as being Geralt's mentor and throughout the hour and 20 movie we learn a lot about his past and adventures. The film completely changes how the character is often portrayed and rather than being a grizzled old teacher, we see a selfish and greedy man who's more interested in gold than he is with helping people. Dude really says, fuck them kids. Now this is clearly because he grew up without any real access to money and after getting some from a witcher, he puts himself in a position where he can earn more, relishing it in the process. As mentioned earlier, the movie jumps about from time to time and I kinda wanna discuss stuff in chronological order so that you can see how it all fits together. I'm gonna try and keep the plot points as simple as possible as there are a lot of complexities going on that we could sit here talking about for hours. However, if we look at the timeline from the top down, starting at the earliest point, we watch as Vesemir lives the life of a servant for a lord whose wife is gravely ill. With his friend Ilana, he goes out to get some medicine for her, but after stealing a pie, they're served a slice of humble pie, hey? Eh? When they come across a witcher named Deglin. Deglin accompanies them and they discover that the lord's wife is actually possessed by a maw, which he casts out and kills with help from Vesemir. Vesemir ends up following in his footsteps and he sets out on the journey to become a witcher. Played by Theo James, he adds some real depth to the character and seeing him not painted out in the best light early on makes you actually become attached to his journey. The trials are what really shapes him and watching the brutal training that the kids go through shows why Vesemir becomes one of the toughest witches out there. They clearly took heavy inspiration from the Spartans with children being forced into the wilderness and placed in the valley of the shadow of death but Vesemir survives. From this point onwards he's transformed through the work of mages and he works throughout the land establishing his reputation. This kind of takes us to the opening of the movie in which he saves a child from a monster. This creature actually speaks which is something that's uncommon for them and it makes Vesemir realise that a darker thing is at foot. Vesemir visits Alana who's now aged significantly in comparison because of the experiments that were carried out on him. It turns out that when she was younger, she was taken in by nobles known as the Zerts of Cadwin. Elana raised a family and she hires Vesemir to work alongside a sorceress called Tetra in order to kill what's hunting her people. Along the way they find that there are hybrid monsters that now exist in the mountains which are crossed between several creatures. We find Kitsu which due to its bloodline being that of an elf in Amar is able to build reality warping illusions. They also see a new kind of basilisk and we learn that these monsters have been created by humans that have mastered a certain form of alchemy. The alchemy of course exists within the witches, which we know were created in a similar way and this is what's granted them their long lives and powers. It all traces back to Kaer Moen, which we learn has been used as a place that manufactures monsters in order for the witches to have a constant supply of work. Because the witches hunted monsters for centuries, their numbers have grown less and less and thus Deglin came up with a plan to create more in order to make money. This very much makes Vesemir reflect on his life, namely his constant focus on cash as well as the cost that comes with it. It's a price he wasn't willing to pay and though it seemed like his character was always on the money, from this point you can bank on this being the reason that the witches ascend into liquidation. Ooh, that was bad. Now it turns out the witches made Kitsu who then made other monsters and it's led to them having somewhat security in their way of life. The sacking of Kaer Moen has had a lot of question marks surrounding it in Witcher lore and we now know exactly why it happened. The witches were creating monsters and thus people gained a reason to turn against them. This comes in the form of Tetra who wastes no time gathering her soldiers in order to destroy the witches fortress. With help from Kitsu they summon forth more monsters which ravage the castle leading to countless character deaths. This includes the Elder Rydric, which I've definitely pronounced wrong. Deglin and eventually Alana who travels into the lower levels of the castle in order to wait out the battle with the children. One of these is actually Geralt as a child who you will of course know from the main Witcher books, games and show. He guides his friends out of the castle and we'll talk about what happens to him later on in the video. 
Akitsu uses her illusion abilities in order to make Vesemir believe that when he's fighting Rydrick and Ilana that he's actually fighting her and Tetra. Using altered moments from his childhood in which he and Ilana played in the snow, Kitsu plagues his mind making him believe that she's drowning in money which of course showcases how his greed and the greed of the witches was their damnation. He takes a trip down memory lane and though he's in an illusion, he's faced with the horrors of what he did when abandoning Ilana. He ends up going berserk and he badly wounds her to which Tetra arrives to finish him off in his moment of despair. Deglin is badly hurt during the battle but he shows up in the final moment and kills Tetra before succumbing to his wounds. Vesemir leaves with Alana and the pair sit overlooking a lake as she dies in his arms. He stumbles across the children, namely Geralt, and this very much sets the stages for the game in which we know that the humans were very prejudiced towards the witches. However, they somewhat need them in order to fight the monsters in the land, and we know that because of Kitsu's work that there will be a constant supply of them. Now on the flip side of this, all those that know how to turn people into witches are dead. Thus, Vesemir is going to have to go through the lands in order to track someone down who has the knowledge to do this. Whilst we know the witches will return, they'll be very different to what's come before and both Vesemir and Geralt are more focused on just getting by rather than turning a massive profit that destroys people and their land in the process. It's sort of a bittersweet moment as we see the destruction of the witches, but much like the Jedi, something better rises in their place without the more negative aspects that they carry. It's very much a fresh start for them, and though they have a lot of work ahead of them, the darker side of the witches is now destroyed. We very much get the idea that Vesemir will become a mentor figure now to the children, as he very much repeats the words of Deglin. It's a great ending, and as for my thoughts on the film itself, Though it was a bit slow paced early on, it did get better the more story that we got. This actually worked really well at filling in some of the blank spots in the Witcher timeline and it also established a lot of character arcs for several of our series mainstays. Really enjoyed it and I absolutely love Netflix animes for this reason. There's so much that they can do with the violence and gore that it just makes it a blast to watch. This in Castlevania was great and overall it gets an 8 out of 10. And obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie so make sure you comment below and let me know. We are running a competition right now and giving away 3 MCU box sets on the 30th of August. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the film. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of the perfect scene in the Marvel Universe. We talk about why Thor entering Wakanda works so well on a number of levels and it's definitely worth checking out right after this. If not, then thank you for sitting until the end of this one. I've been Paul, you've been the best, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.